Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Smuggler's Notch for round three MPO lead card action of the Discraft's Green Mountain Championship. I am Jeremy Colling, joined by my co-host, Brian Earhart. Great to be here, Jeremy. It's great to have you. And real quick, I want to talk a bit about the patent pending podcast hosted by Jesse from Trash Panda. If you don't know Jesse, he is an awesome dude. If you don't know Trash Panda, he is doing some really cool things with sustainability focused disc golf products. He's making minis and other stuff. And he says, you know what? We don't necessarily make the best discs on the planet. We make the best discs for the planet. And I freaking love that. Go check out that podcast. It's about the future of disc golf. You will love it. Go to Spotify and all the other places where you can stream radio stuff. Ricky Wysocki, folks. 100% C1X, 100% Scramble. Not too shabby out here at Brewster Ridge. He's leading the field in strokes gained from the tee, and he hasn't missed a putt in the circle. He looks really good. He looks focused. He's been saying all week how good he feels just overall. Isaac Robinson, though, mm -hmm. this kid's just living a kind of a dream right now. Totally. Yeah, I mean, he's got the most birdies in the field. He's got a couple bogeys, which Ricky still does not have, but he's only one back of the engine that is Ricky Wysocki. Paul McBeth. Still trying to go for his eighth consecutive win post-world tournament, if that makes any sense. He just always wins after Worlds. He's two back of our leader. And Chris Dickerson rounding our, our card. Last year's champion shooting back-to-back -back course records in the middle of the tournament. He is a force to be reckoned with out here. And here we are. Well, number one, just a classic straightforward hole, 322. Backhand turnover is fun and pretty. These days, we're starting to see a lot more just stock forehand hyzers, some nice flat to fade forehands, and uh, yeah, just a nice, easy entry to this course. First in the box today. Currently holding a one-stroke lead. He's a four-time consecutive GMC champion, two-time world champion. He's representing dynamic discs. Let's give a big warm welcome for Ricky Wysocki. Today we are lucky to have three of the six players in the world rated over 1040. The other three now on this card are Matt Orham, who's in seventh, Gannon Burr, who's in 12th, and Calvin Heinberg in 26th place. Ricky doing what he wanted to do, fading a little bit right, but he's edge of circle inside C1. Lawrenceville, Georgia. He's representing Prodigy Discs. Let's give it up for Isaac Robinson. Very nice. Use all the left side of the fairway as it drifted back down the middle. Joining us next from Huntington Beach, California, is the 2019 Green Mountain Champion and a six time and current world champion of disc golf. Let's hear it for Paul McBeth. Paul mentioned to me earlier this week that his relationship with the zone has been a love-hate relationship. He's almost relearning how to throw the disc after a long hiatus of really not trusting it. That's a beautiful wow. opening forehand. He's trying to get a lot of reps with this disc. This is a newer zone that's been in his bag. Gray, Tennessee. He's the 2021 Green Mountain Champion. He's representing Discraft. Let's hear it for Chris Dickerson. For the first time I've ever heard the word hate associated with the zones. I know. A universally liked disc. 322 is a pretty decent carry for being able to throw that slow speed. Chris going backhand, mild turnover, just like you called it, just a dead straight shot. It's gonna come up a bit short, but all four players well within birdie range. Perfect. A great starting putt. Get those putter juices flowing right off the bat, making a nice putt from the edge. And 
Ricky keeping that circle one percentage perfect. What do you think about this whole, does it need to begin to get stretched out as the world championships are coming up next year? Are, are there some short par threes that you think have room to be stretched out? Oh, well, I mean, over half the field's birdieing the hole right off the gate. Is that a bad thing to start around with a birdie, just getting the course yeah. started flowing into the rest? I don't know. I think that this certainly could be more of like a 370 if they could yeah. potentially bring it back. I could see that being a really fantastic starting hole. But I really like that the tunnel is its wide, yet it still somehow feels like it's constraining your shot to a very specific shape. Yeah, and I guess it's leading you into hole number two. <laughs> now we get into the course. 550, but it's very uphill. Opening tee shot looks pretty straightforward, but if you aim for the middle of the fairway, especially short, there's a lot of little roots that you can kick off of and go straight right. So you want to fly as far as you can forward and have some sort of flex forehand up that left gap. OB all down the right side here. Always one of the most challenging holes on the course, this time coming in at the fourth most difficult. And Ricky's drive should get a counter skip down to the right side. That's exactly what he was looking for. Really similar to what we saw in round one. Perhaps even better for Macbeth. Yeah. Oh, not a good rock kick, but might have some options there, but that's certainly gonna limit some of the potential approach options that he'd like to have. Similar line. The ground play is so finicky. Oh my goodness, look at that. It just, those shots could have easily gone and kicked left, right? It could have just gone straight. Isaac going higher and kicking into the middle. Go figure. It will be interesting watching Isaac challenge this course. One time we did get to see James Conrad, obviously another player notorious for throwing all backhands like Isaac's game plan. Look at that fantastic approach. I love that he's just like, wow. I don't need to push it back to the right. Yeah. I'm just going to give myself some sort of look from outside of circle one. But we saw James Conrad go shoot a, I think he shot a perfect front nine. I think he birdied every hole on the front nine and en route to shooting what was the course record at that time. So it'd be interesting to see if Isaac can maintain that level of backhand proficiency. Chris going full flex, also getting inside the circle. Good approach. And Ricky, this is a bit wide right. No. Oh. Folks, I think we're going to see the first bogey from Ricky Wysocki. I'll turn him in. <gasps> that was a straight up grip lock. Yikes. Wow, gut check time right now. What just happened there? Ricky goes from in position to get a birdie to, if he doesn't make a 70-foot putt, he's going to take a double bogey. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. No, just it, calm down. It's all good. Oh, my goodness. Little jump spinner. <laughs> That's awesome. Watch this dead center <laughs> like so dead center at worlds ricky missed like a 10 footer at jones i believe it was on 16 they interviewed him and he was like you know what that was so stupid it wasn't even a thing and it wasn't i guarantee real. you yeah. that last shot he had the same mindset look at that so nonchalant the flow with that style is just it's endlessly entertaining for me to see isaac robinson putt from distance Call that one C2. And Chris Dickerson catching on left side. Putts are just dropping like flies right now. Or wait, wait, wait. That's the wrong way of saying it. They're ca it's like Steph Curry out here everywhere. I was trying to help correct you. I, and yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know where I was going either. Okay, so. chalk that one up as a loss. We'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> Tap in for Paul. It's going to be a par four there. We're going to move into hole number three. The challenge here is the uphill. 
That's makes it. you throw something maybe a tad more understable, but really what you see is what you get. This is another one of those holes that I, I hope one day gets stretched out from 282 to maybe like a 370, like you said. Uh, that's always mm-hmm. a good distance, but this is one of the m- must-get birdies on this course. Yeah, it's the easiest hole in the course, and it's actually rivaling hole six on Fox Run in terms of ease on tour at 2.37. Yeah, there's no danger. There's a backstop. Beautiful shot from Chris. Perfect. Hi. Rarely see them hop up on top of that little mound there by the basket. Isaac forces the hyzer. This is going to be just fine. Yeah, I feel like this is like a field work hole. You come out here with a stack of mid ranges mm-hmm. or putters and you just empty your bag out. It's a pretty comfortable distance. Luna for Paul. Uh, just a bit short, but I mean, we're nitpicking here. That's It's actually a bit. Yeah. Just a t- just that, tiny I'm, bit short. <laughs> what is a bit in, in terms of distance? Well, today it's going to be 10 feet. Here's Ricky with a harp. And yeah, just a bit closer. <laughs> Macbeth first. We'll call it one bit away. Yeah, this is one that if you you miss this one, it feels like missing hole six at Fox Run. It's just mm-hmm. you, you just have to traverse this hole and walk to the next tee pad. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what changes end up taking place next year before the World Championships. They don't really like to give easy gimme holes at Worlds, it seems like. Of course, and the other thing here is a lot of this land is very protected at this property, so they have to get very um, specific permission to even make changes to any of these holes that are not already on the existing fairways. Um, I love hole number four, Jeremy, Mm -hmm. and uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Well, if you want to land in this fairway, most players are going to go with a backhand turnover of some sort. Forehand can work as well, but the angle is kind of tough to avoid going in the right side woods, which you just have to avoid. There's really no way to get to the pin if you're tucked left side, you're tucked right side. If you do find that middle of the fairway, it should be a pretty routine mid-range or putter Mm -hmm. approach. Just got to hit this initial gap right here. And Chris is drifting towards that backside. This is going to be a tricky approach. Isaac's got the height and looks like he's got the turn as well. That is perfect. Not nice gonna, shot. Yeah, you can't really do it much better unless you go with a flippy driver. I mean, that's just placed in a perfect spot. Speaking of which, here's Paul with the flippy driver. It's a little too much. Yeah, and kicking down and right is not ideal. Oh boy, and that launches left. Another misfire for Ricky. He has been, like we said, number one in the field. Lays the forehand roller down in the woods that I can't even pretend to know how difficult that was. It's so scary to try to land that in the woods. <laughs> Normally you throw it out and then Into land the fairway, it. yes. Wow. So many things that he has no idea that he could even account for. Oh, amazing stuff. That is a great standstill approach. Was his back turned to the basket Yeah, that well? was a patent pending stance as well. Mm. I think that was an onyx that he threw. That was perfect angle control. Chris okay. going cr- <laughs> crazy town flick roller, but really what else do you have from that spot? I mean, yeah. you have to get creative, and that's the only real shot you probably even have. Isaac, however, playing this hole a little bit different than the rest of the card, just puts it right down the middle of the fairway. The approach, however, hits that one corner gap that you, you just got to just sneak a little bit right of that. I feel okay. like I feel like Steve Brinster and Jeff Spring should be very proud of this hole. We have four of some of the best players in the world, and we've seen four completely different journeys to get to this basket. There's so many holes like that yeah. on this complex that 
less than 600 feet, and so many unique ways to play it right and wrong. A long bid from Macbeth comes up just a bit short. Let's see if Isaac's able to save the birdie. Yeah. Of course he is. It feels like he's just playing skee ball at an arcade. He's like, just flinging it. If skee ball at the arcade was all he ever did, I mean, he just is just automatic from range. I mean, there's just no thought. It's just point A to point B, and wow, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Ricky to save the improbable par. Are you kidding, guys? That is an insane four. That should have been guaranteed bogey. I'm going to definitely go back and look at that forehand roller that he threw. I bet he is relieved at this par. Chris also with the par. Number five, another short par three, another tricky par three, 305 feet. If you go dead straight, you'll be about 35 feet left of the basket. A lot of forehands try to land just outside C1, skipping down to the wood chips down there. I mean, it's tricky. There's, there's a tight gap you have to hit. There's OB all down the left side. It definitely makes you think. Forehand drives, you're kind of aiming at that that birch tree, or is it a beech tree? The white one on the left? Either way, it's a bee, if you know what I mean. <laughs> or you do this as a right-hand backhand player. You just play to the top of the hill, just like he did on hole two's approach. Play to the spot. Don't try to get too cheeky. Give himself a look. Obviously, he's draining putts right now. But there's that bee tree. Just missed that one and hides her down the hill. That's how you draw it up. Just a bit short from Chris. He'll take that every day of the week. A uh, very fortunate kick there for Paul. That was shanked. There's a bit of that love-hate relationship. He said he's just having a lot of trouble uh, under-throwing it or over-throwing it. He's not mm. quite getting that stable flight that Chris is getting out of it without sawing it off, and a great shot there from Ricky, and that's Ricky's specialty shot, is that totally. slow, overstable approach disc. And it seems like more and more each year he's just leaning on this shot at farther and farther distances. What a shot. And the accuracy is great, but the height is what allowed exactly. the disc to just force its way down the hill at the end. It kind of just ran out of steam and just worked its way into position. This is about 70 feet. Valiant effort. Ski ball, man. I tell you, just going for the hundreds right now, top left corner. I was just about to say the exact same thing. It yeah. looks like he's not even trying, but being in that mindset where your brain and body is just so connected, it's so fun to play the game of disc uh -huh. golf. And you can tell he just he knows how good his putt is right now, and he's not even trying to access the green. It's like he doesn't even need to access C1. He threw just straight. I think one time in my 16 years of disc golf, I found that flow. Yeah. One time where I was just like, I don't care where it's going. The next one's going in. And it seems like he's hitting that routinely. Very exciting to watch. And he's a rookie. Yeah. And not only is he a rookie, he is whomping the field in rookie of the year. I mean, he's got of it course. wrapped up. Chandler Kramer, however, he is also he's in second place, but there's a pretty big gap right now between the two. Another par three, 345 downhill. You're just kind of letting the natural stability of the disc fade out at the end. You don't need to force a hyzer here. This is a very touchy shot, hard to hit the brakes. 
Looks pretty ideal. Just got to miss these last ones down the middle. Doesn't. But guess what? C2 putt coming. Chris going putter, and this is very nice. That is chef's kiss. Love it when out of your hand right there, you're like, okay, that's a birdie coming up. And it's just at no point was that, there was nothing that could possibly yeah. happen. That's the disc for it. Like, it mm -hmm. it's, it's really nice to have a disc that you know just will fly that line naturally. Perfect shot. We saw Ricky do about exactly what we just saw from Chris in round one. And that time he gets a bit squirrely through the last couple of trees. If he hits those, he's still got a great look at it, but now he's tapped or he, he's parked for the tap in. Yeah, that's just going to be perfect. Yeah, a little extra speed. Pretty much perfect. Though. Yeah, 25 feet. Okay, that was just a conservative 25 ball yeah. ski ball. That wasn't quite 100 up in the top corner, but... Uh, Look at that trajectory. Just zero wobble. And it's not like he's in-to-out spin putting. His arm is, like, very steady. That's just one of the prettiest putting strokes I think I've ever seen. I, I'd agree with you. It's just, it's just so fluid, I think. It's... Nothing seems out of place, and it seems like, yeah, of course he's making putts from 80 feet. It's just the perfect amount of efficiency. And we're just going to see a star frame on six, which is pretty, pretty impressive. It's on the easier half of the holes in the course, but it's definitely no gimme for the rest of the Definitely field. not. Speaking of not a gimme for the rest of the field, this starts the stretch of a very difficult run of holes from here to about 11. We have some real tricky woods. Hole seven's a par four, 575 feet. The play is a backhand fairway driver to land right around that tee pad you saw on the ground there. From there, it's just a straight uphill putter shot. Pretty easy in, in the idea. The execution of it just comes with about 800 trees. There, there's a very high percentage that you're gonna scramble and have to throw something creative on this hole. It's hard to put one in the exact spot you need to be. Very committed tee shot for Isaac. That looks like it's going to roll back 80 feet. Not terrible. That was a fortunate landing at least. But that was a bad break. I mean, of he, course. he threw the thing so well. That did not deserve any sort of negative distance treatment. Chris going with the inside hyzer. That opens up different amount of lanes, but there's going to be a ton of trees. Yeah, if you choose to go early, you choose to roll the dice on this one. And Ricky, so oh close, but my what is that? Gosh. Two of them. And that was nearly home free. I mean, did you see was Joey Tamale? <laughs> but was that a smirk from Paul, too? No, I was looking at Joey Tamale in the background with his jaw just dropped. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a miserable break, but yeah, you... Well, well, from the perspective here on the tee, th that thing was out of sight for two yeah. or three seconds, and then you see this thing just ripping back across the fairway. So Ricky now, look at this awkward stance here. Scramble mode supreme coming up for Ricky, and he's right back into position. He should be fine for the par. What a committed gap hit there for Macbeth. Yeah, that standstill with, I think that's his flippiest undertaker. He kind of curled up a little bit, shortened up. That's such a sweet shot. 28 feet. He really is just a genius. As far as, he's a disc throwing genius. He really is. I, I'm convinced. He reminds me of like a Roger Federer character in tennis. Very flashy, very high IQ when it comes to mm -hmm. making the shots happen, having the variety. Robinson with a good approach. Chris, good approach. Maybe just outside C1 coming up. 
Ricky, this is, I mean, it's makeable. And he gives it an effort to just to even have an opportunity to hit the base on your third shot. That was a really nice second. Hmm. I'm pretty sure that's his exact reaction as well. Oh, oh that's a hmm as well. We've seen, I don't think, besides uh, Isaac's miss putt on hole one, I don't think we've really even seen any miss putts this round. Okay, well, the hole's got a bit of a force field around the basket right now. Three pretty poor efforts. And Ricky Wysocki in danger of losing a stroke to the other three guys mm -hmm. after that horrible rollback is going to escape with par, and he's going to tie the rest of the card. I mean, that's a gift right there. I said Ricky Wysocki got a gift, and I, I was saying it as if he were the leader. And I just didn't even notice with all the C2 putts that Isaac had made that he actually is now leading the event with that nice four-hole or five-hole birdie streak. Anyways, on to hole eight, uphill par four, 625 feet. The play off the tee, what are you trying to do here, Brian? I mean, you just have to blast one straight uphill. You have to get the hyzer flip. You have to push it as far forward as you can. You cannot be right. You have to get it through this tight gap and go left. This is looking pretty good, but it drifts right and kicks horribly right. That's worst case scenario. That's a terrible spot to be. I have been pretty much in that exact spot. It is a very tough scramble. I like this flex yeah. play from Chris. Going over stable Anheuser, late flex down the middle. Good distance, enough to get there of the second shot, but if you can get even more distance off the tee, you're not hating it. Yeah, I feel like footing on the second shot is really frustrating. There's a lot of stumps and roots, and mm -hmm. if you're just far enough up, you can at least potentially opt for a standstill. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah, that's elite distance. That's what you're really like. If you can get up towards those rocks up the fairway, you've just blasted one. Oh, no. Yeah, I mean, you're so far back, you want to advance the fairway a little bit, but it's so tight back there. He's going to have to pitch out again. And red numbers most assuredly coming here. It's just what kind of red number are we going to be looking at is it going to be a double it would be a fantastic bogey save from this point oh ricky hits a tree but this time it doesn't shoot off into the woods but he's still obviously dejected yeah similar mistake to what he made in hole two mm -hmm. just didn't get over on it enough and there's the second layup for isaac unfortunately he still has a ways to go. Macbeth, after the big tee shot, a good approach. And he's going to be putting for the birdie three. Are those trees going to be an obstacle for him? I think he has a straddle at least. I don't think it's going to be terrible for him. That is a great recovery shot. That, that's a bogey that you can walk away with confidence. Exactly. Yeah. And that's a no-brainer forehand approach for Ricky. He really wants to clean up those big power forehands, though. A couple of those have gotten away from him just a bit. And Chris, man, what a round he's putting together right now. Six birdies. 
And imagine if you just made that 25 footer mm-hmm. on the previous hole. Mm-hmm. He's playing really solid right now. It doesn't even feel like the focus is on him right now. It's very quiet. I mean, I feel like if you make a couple of those mid range putts, like he'd made on one right at the edge of the circle, you expect him to make it, but it still kind of yeah. feels really good. Macbeth in for the birdie. Four unders, not too shabby. I mean, if he's able to pick up the birdie on nine, he's right on track. I mean, this is the, the hole they're about to play is kind of somewhat in the bonus birdie category. All four of these players, obviously, are going to have a great shot to birdie it, though. And here we are again, another tough par three, 375. Like we said before, you have to hit the brakes on this hole, but you still have to push it far enough to where you can get somewhat of a slide up to the basket. It slopes really hard right after here, right when we get inside circle one. This is just a fun tee shot, though. It really is. A little bit of drift and a little bit of fade for Chris and... He's going to have a putt inside the circle for seven under. That was just bound to hit those trees pretty much the whole way. Not a bad reaction, though. He's going to be about 35, 40 from the basket. Not terrible. And he's got a decent angle to get pretty aggressive with the putt as well. He's so good at throwing that shot. It's always fun to watch the two of them on the same card, and I've never really gotten sick of it because of how opposite their <laughs> play styles are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Macbeth more of a finesse player, whereas Ricky really likes to get over with those stable discs. And it's like Paul over time has gotten more finesse, and mm-hmm. Ricky has just been more like, I'm going to just lean, lean my entire yeah. body into the shot. Uh-huh. Wow, he runs that. Of course he runs it, Germ. He's an animal. <laughs> He's just at the arcade. <laughs> he has nothing to lose. <laughs> kind of a rough bid there for Paul, but... He stays close enough for the yeah. bar. Ricky, downhill, edge of circle. <laughs> the fist bump to let him know, I'm here. Five birdies in the front nine, just that... First bogey of the tournament for him. That's going to finish the front nine at four under. Oh, no. Another Chris. circle one miss. A little right jab to the tree limb. <laughs> An appropriate way to get your frustration out, I'm sure. Paul's just not looked crisp. Just nothing has mm. looked mm-hmm. competent, fully competent. And that being said, he's got to be pleased that he's only that he hasn't lost anything to the leader, and he, he's still right there in fourth place. Uh, two back, I think, after that performance. I mean, it wasn't bad, but like you said, it wasn't crisp. It wasn't what we are used to seeing from him on moving day. Right now, it's still Ricky Wysocki in front by one over Dickerson and Isaac Robinson. We've got nine more holes to play here. As the rest of the card, look at that move from Gannon Burr. Look at that move from Greg Barsby. We got guys jumping up that leaderboard in the playoff scenarios. So many things that are playing out right now. I mean, this is this is starting to get really exciting. Be sure to join us. Nine more holes here at Brewster Ridge. We'll see you in just a minute. Thank you. 